Well, good morning, everyone. It's great to uh, be here together, to gather, to worship God uh, together in this glorious, glorious day. Um, <clears throat> I just have a, a few more books to uh, show to you uh, for over this time. So yesterday, um, I showed you this, which is a daily devotional with um, a passage to read. So uh, some of them are quite big, some of them are small. So some of these are quite small, going through Galatians, and then uh, just a, a page of um, a page of reflection and with a prayer at the end. Really good to get into the Bible. Galatians isn't the only one that they do. Uh, they have one on um, judges by a guy called Justin Moat who. Uh, was a massive influence on me um, a number of years ago. So that's a really good one uh, to get hold of. And then Alec Mortar, who's a, just a fantastic preacher. Uh, so perhaps that's another one that you can get. Um, and then there's some children's Bibles. Um, the Beginner's Bible, if you don't have this for your child or grandchild, this is a fantastic Bible um, just look at the pictures on the inside, vibrant, short stories. Um, you can tell how much I've used this one because it's kind of coming apart. Um, I got it um, at, when I was a children's and youth worker and it's kind of been through the first couple of years with Arthur as well. So um, it's a great, great uh, Bible to have. Uh, normally, it's, um, normally it's like 13 quid. But on 10 of those, you can get it for nine quid, which is a fantastic, fantastic price. And then for older children, the Jesus Storybook Bible, which is just a great Bible for, for, um, for older children. And this one, it says every story, it's every story whispers his name. So, um, and it just said, it just tells the Bible and as it is, but allows it to show us, to point us to Jesus every step through the whole of the Bible. So it points us to Jesus at every stage. And again, some fantastic pictures. Um, I'm just going to switch over to Facebook for a second just to see how the stream's going. Hopefully, um, I've set the resolution slightly higher, so that should mean that we get a better image, uh, but hopefully there's no lag. If there's any lag today, if someone could let me know, that would be great. Well, our Bible uh, readings today is Psalm 112, uh, Exodus chapter 12, verses 14 to 36, and 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 12 to 19. So those are our Bible readings for today. And so let's just spend a moment uh, to prepare our hearts to hear from God this morning, to hear from his word, and to see what he has to say to us. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, you let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed are you, Lord God of our salvation. To you be praise and glory forever. As once you ransomed your people from Egypt, and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominions of darkness and brought us into your kingdom and raised uh, the kingdom of your risen son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made and praise, your, and praise you for your mighty acts. 
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. And so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. Psalm 112. Alleluia. Blessed are those who fear the Lord and have great delight in his commandments. Their descendants will be mighty in the land. A generation of the faithful that will be blessed. Wealth and riches will be, the, will be in their house and their righteousness endures forever. Light shines in the darkness for the upright, the gracious, and full of compassion are the righteous. It goes well with those who are generous in leading and order their affairs with justice. For they will never be shaken. The righteousness will be held in everlasting remembrance. They will not be afraid of any evil tidings. Their heart is steadfast, trusting in the Lord. Their, hearts, their heart is sustained and will not fear until they see the downfall of their foes. They have given freely to the poor. Their righteousness stands forever. Their heads will be exalted with honour. The wicked shall see it and be angry. They shall sit that they shall gnash their teeth in despair. The desire of the wicked shall perish. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Exodus chapter twelve, reading from verse 14 to 36. Verse 14 to 36. This is, the, this is a day you are to commemorate for generations to come. You shall celebrate its festival to the Lord a lasting ordinance. For seven days you are to eat bread made without yeast. On the first day, remove the yeast from your house. Whoever eats anything with yeast in it from the first day until the seventh must be cut off, cut off from Israel. On the first day, hold a sacred assembly and another one on the Sabbath day. Do not work at all on these seven days except for preparing except to prepare food for everyone to eat. That is all you may do. Celebrate the feast of unleavened bread, because it is it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Celebrate this day as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. In the first month, you are to eat bread made without yeast. From, evening, from, from the evening of the fourteenth day until the evening of the twenty-first day. For seven days, no yeast is to be found in your house. And whoever eats anything with yeast in it must be cut off from the community of Israel, whether he is an alien or a native-born. Eat nothing made with yeast. Wherever you live, you must eat unleavened bread. Then Moses summoned all the elders of Israel and said to them, Go at once and select the animals for your families and slaughter the Passover lamb. 
take a bunch of hyssop, dip it into the blood in the basin, and put some on some of the blood on the top and on both sides of the door frame. Not one of you shall go without shall go out of the door of your of his house until morning. When the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the on the top and sides of the door frame, and will pass over the doorway. And he will not permit the destroyer to enter your house and strike you down. Obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance for you and your descendants when you enter the land that the Lord will give you as he promised. Observe this ceremony, and when your children ask you, what does this ceremony mean to you, then tell them, it is the Passover sacrifice of the Lord, who passed over the house of the Israelites in Egypt, and spared our home when he was when he struck down the Egyptians. And then the people bowed down and worshipped. The Israelites did just what the Lord commanded Moses and Aaron. At midnight, the Lord struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, from the firstborn of Pharaoh who sat on the throne, to the firstborn of the prisoner who was in the dungeon, and the firstborn of all the livestock as well. Pharaoh and all his officials and all of Egypt got up during the night, and there was loud wailing in Egypt for there was not a house without someone dead. During the night, Pharaoh summoned Moses and Aaron and said, Up, leave my people, you and the Israelites. Go worship you, the Lord as you have requested. Take your flocks and your herds as you have said and go and, be, and also bless me. The Egyptians urged the people to hurry and leave the country. For otherwise, they said, we will all die. So the people took their dough before the yeast was added, carried it on their shoulders, and kneading troughs wrapped, and kneading troughs wrapped in cloth. The Israelites did as Moses instructed and asked the Egyptians for articles of silver and gold and, and for clothing. The Lord made the Egyptians favorably disposed towards the people and gave them what they asked for. So they plundered the Egyptians. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Starting at verse 12. But if it is preached that Christ has been raised from the dead, how can some of you say that there is no resurrection of the dead? There is no, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then not even Christ has been raised. And if Christ has not been raised... Our preaching is useless, and so is your faith. More than that, more than that, we are then found. More than that, we are then found to be false witnesses about God, for we have testified about God that He raised Christ from the dead. But He, but He did not raise Him. But He did not raise Him if, in fact, the dead are not raised. For if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised either. And if Christ has not been raised, your faith is futile. You are still in your sins. Then, who also, then, then, those, who, then those also who have fallen asleep in Christ are lost, if only for this life we have hoped in Christ. We are to be pitied more than all men. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
isn't it great that Paul goes on to say that Christ has indeed been raised and that we are uh, found secure in Christ and we have a certain hope. Uh, I think that's a great thing to remember. I don't know why the Church of England left the reading there. But we'll pick it up tomorrow, I'm sure. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Christ is risen from the dead, the firstfruits of those who have fallen asleep. Death is swallowed up in victory. The trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised. Where, O oh death, is your sting? We shall not all sleep, but we will be changed. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh death, is your sting? Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his, <clears throat> through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let's pray. Merciful Father, we thank you for your great goodness to us and we pray today as we uh, as we go about our jobs as we go about our jobs in the home or out at work that you'll be with us and help us to do what we can for you also help us to be good good Christian men and women as we serve you as our Lord and Saviour Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, today we pray for Mark, who is the partner, the husband of uh, a lady who comes to Messy Church. Uh, Mark is a machine operator for uh, medicine machinery, and today he's off to Milton Keynes to do testing on machinery that should help us fight. COVID-19 and so Lord uh, we pray that you'll protect him, uh, that you'll have your hands on him, uh, that he will know that you are with him and Lord more importantly than any of that we pray that through your protection you will bring him safely into the kingdom of heaven, that he may turn and trust in you, him and his whole, whole family. Lord in your mercy hear our prayer. We also pray for the family of Michael Wheeler, whose funeral it is today. A strange, bizarre funeral around the graveside. Lord, I pray that as they mourn, that you will uh, help and bless them to mourn this day in bizarre times. Help our church to be a comfort to them and to know how we can support them best. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we pray for uh, the Prime Minister as he recovers from, uh, from COVID-19. Help him to stay safe. Thank you that he has uh, a place to go 
where he can relax and walk in the countryside. We pray that, Lord, you will uh, help him to only work when necessary, that you'll give him wisdom on what to do and what not to do, so that he will be back at work fighting for us in this country for all that needs to happen. And we do pray for our government today as they meet, as they talk about what will happen and when lockdown will end. We pray that, Lord, uh, you will do a miraculous work today so that we can start to meet together again, maybe just in small ways at first, but that you'll, you'll help us to have a little bit more freedom so we can go outside and be a little bit more normal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And finally, Father, we pray for protection over the church buildings as they are empty, uh, especially as some dodgy phone calls have been going around some of the churches from a man pretending to be police. Lord, protect all church buildings in this area from uh, crime. Help us to uh, be wise in what we do and what we say about them. Lord, I thank you that uh, I can go down there to check on them and that they're safe. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life and power, who through your might, the mighty resurrection of your Son overcame the old order of sin and death to make all things new in him, grant that we being dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus may reign with him in glory, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be praise and honour and glory and might now and in all eternity. Amen. And so rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. So may the risen Christ grant us joy of eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. So um, if you do choose to get some books these are all available uh, from ten of those dot com um, perhaps you think oh I'd really like to get uh, some books but then everyone's adding up postage if it would be a good idea to uh, order things together and then uh, the postage will be be less um, but also uh, a bigger order might help um, help the company more um, if that's something you're interested in why not uh, start a chat in the um, church Facebook messaging group if you're a part of the church and not a part of that group uh, why not uh, message me or Kerry and we'll add you into that group that would be a good thing to do or if you just want to email me to say oh I'd like to order something uh, please do and we can arrange a group order. God bless. Have a great day. It's sunny outside, so uh, make the most of it. Go for your daily exercise uh, and spend time in the garden. God bless. Have a good day.